my answer is, um, I understand that you went specifically to construction. And this gentleman over here in his division has to deal with independent contractors in full scope. And I do agree with you. I think your comment is very wise and thought out in the fact that he's saying we want one definition for all that we can, that employers don't get confused. They're already confused about what's this, what's that, what's this. And if we can come up with, some of yours may be included, we can come up with a definition of what is an independent contractor in the state of Iowa. And if you are violating, uh, you abusing that independent contractor status and the remedies that are available to you as an independent contractor, we're going to come after you. Okay, but to completely confuse what's going to happen to the employers in the state of Iowa, I, I would probably oppose that. But I'm willing to look at which one of those are important and which ones truly do identify the difference between an employee and an independent contractor. And I think the definition is what is an employee and what's an employer rather than what's an independent contractor. I think that's, I think that's the way it's defined in the bill. As you look at employees and employers, and if you're not an employee and you're not an employer, then you may very well be an independent contractor. And if I could point out, too, I think this isn't quite as far-reaching as, as folks might think. You know, there's, there's, on the face of the bill, corporations in general, this traditional subcontractor arrangement that we're used to in the construction industry, where you have a general contractor, a big corporation, who subcontracts to, you know, lower-tier subcontracts, who then subcontract, and you get down to, you know, third or fourth-tier lower contract. Uh, lower tier subcontractors, in a lot of instances are, have a corporation, a corporate status. I mean, on the face of the bill, this does not, in any way, shape, or form, change that traditional subcontract relationship between entities, between corporations, I should say, as a corporate entity. I mean, that's not what the, the, the problem in the misclassification necessarily is. The problem in misclassification is the sole proprietor, the partnership, the one guy in a truck, the five people on a street corner being picked up by a van and going to a job site. I mean, that's what this is trying to address. That's where the millions of dollars are being lost at the revenue side of things. So when you have a traditional relationship of general, sub, corporation, corporation, this bill, this potential law has absolutely no effect. It's only when you're dealing in worlds of places where, in, where people have not taken the steps to formalize a business contract. Right. Okay, so Got the uh, 1099 in front of the immigration. I think it's the other way around. I assume there's some questions or comments as it concerns the immigration portion of this bill. And we're open for comments, and we're going to have another meeting, I think, in a couple days, and uh, that will give everybody an opportunity to come up with written suggestions if they need. But uh, <coughs> it would appear to at least Representative Palmer and myself, I think Representative Horvath would join with us that immigration or the illegal immigration that's occurred hasn't really been addressed very well by the United States government, by the federal government. And if it hasn't been, then again, it's gonna fall upon the shoulders of the state to do something, and that's what this bill is attempting to do. And the way in which it attempts to address that problem is to penalize the employer because if the employer, if there is no employment opportunity for that immigrant in the state of Iowa, you know what, maybe he or she will go to some other state where they don't have the types of laws that we have in Iowa. Now, whether or not you believe in that philosophy, that's a whole different thing, but we do have an influx of folks that are here illegally, and we don't seem to be getting any relief from them. Representative Warbach, would you agree with that? I would agree with that, and I would expand it. One, I would, I would ask, would, would it be fair to say for our discussion that Swiss is an example of why we need stuff like this? Some people might say they're the poster child. Okay. Well, because this would go after Swiss, but yet the, the most one of the most enabling persons in, in Washington, which I've worked, was Vice President of the Union, and this bill wouldn't address that at all. Is there any way that we can address that? Anybody who gets financial gain, who, who enables enables illegal immigrants for financial gain, would be as guilty as the employer? I mean, that's what we're going after, isn't it? To stop it? Yeah. 
you know, I would have no problems working with you to address this problem in one every way that I think is more all encompassing. Yeah, I'm absolutely for one out of work, but I think that there are other ways to work that, that we could make sure that someone else below the employer doesn't enable it in a certain way. Again, the three of us were not the wordsmiths of this right. particular bill, so and I think every it's it's open for discussion. But I do think that ultimately it's going to make it to the House floor. I think probably the financial gain component of it is that the front end integration exempts companies where they have gotten an I-9 form from an individual. And I think that's the language on the second page, line 24. An employer who obtains a verification of employment eligibility form required by the Federal Immigration Reform and Control Act shall not be considered in violation of this chapter. So the mere the mere taking an I-9, intaking an I-9 at the at the you know employment employee employer relationship. Um, when that begins, exempts them. So now all of a sudden, we're going to add this financial gain component to it that is more stringent to to individuals that have nothing to do necessarily with the employee-employer relationship on the immigration issue, which is I think what you're trying to get at here, um, and 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 pin it on other people when the employer just by intaking an I-9 form is exempt from the act. So in 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 operate the way that this operates, the 1099 on the back end of this entire bill really takes care of it to some extent, I think inadvertently, the immigration issue. When somebody is identified as a 1099 contractor, and in the illegal immigrant world, the reason a lot of times they're 1099 is for that very reason. It is an illegal immigrant, and the employer doesn't want to be caught in a federal and state offense by intaking on nine forms, fraudulent verifications, those types of things. They make them an independent contractor, put together a contract, and then you have that relationship as a, you know, an entity and, and, and individual for 1099 purposes. So when you make it more stringent or you make more folks employees versus independent contractors legitimately, you then turn from no employment packet to employment packet, right? On the 1090 on the 1099 portion of this, or the misclassification portion of this. If you identify that somebody's misclassified, make them an employee, they now have to fill out the I-9 form as part of the employment. Uh, uh, packet. So you're forcing people now, employers, to get this I-9 form, and I think on the front end, this takes care of the situation where somebody doesn't get the I-9 form. You don't get the exemption. Do you see what I mean? So, so I think there's an interplay between the two. I don't know necessarily that the front end immigration stuff is as necessary with that infer inadvertent effect on the, on the misclassification end of things, but if it's there, it's there. Um, but I would be concerned about extending this to, to, to whoever, I mean, whether it be a union leader or anybody else, with the term, I think it's a slippery slope. So, okay, if I, if I, I was just throwing out words. Sure. But you and I both agree employers who do this knowingly should be prosecuted. Yes. You, I hope you are also saying that if union leaders do this knowingly, they should be prosecuted as well. And that's all I'm seeking. I'm not seeking anything more than equal responsibility to, to what I call the state bylaw. Sure. Absolutely, and, and I and I agree. I mean, okay. anybody who's knowingly do the words I did, the words a, I threw out. I'm it's sorry. conspiracy theory. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but no, I mean it's a legitimate it's a legitimate concern. I mean if we're gonna if we're going to penalize certain sure. individuals and other people are co-conspirators in this in this arrangement, that that there should be some type of punishment for those individuals as well. I That's think fair. I think with that language on 24, 25, 26 becomes very problematic to extend this any further than it already is written because you give this automatic exemption. Fill out I-9 form, the employer has, this has no effect on the employer. Now. So extending liability to somebody else I think becomes difficult unless you have some type of form or, I think that needs a fair amount of work if you're gonna Well, if the employer, through that exemption, presents that to, presents that person to, makes them available to the union at that facility, I would think if the employer is exempt, that the union should be exempt. Because right. the union, the union leader at that point trusted the employer to hire, hire them correctly. You follow what I'm saying? I, I'm not looking for one side to have an unfair advantage over the other. Either they're all in it together, both on the legal side or the legal side. And, and again, I, I, I agree with the premise. I think the problem becomes you're now paying on other, other entities or other individuals liability based on the actions of whether or not the company in, did an intake of an I-9 form. In, in a union official or a, a, a staffing service agency or a temporary agency that provides employees that may 